Greetings, unsettled souls. <laughs> Welcome to the Correct News. CMIB began to do kind of a bonus show today. I'm not in my studio because it just was going to take way too much time to set it up there. And I just did a really long show yesterday. So, I mean, this is pretty much for the people that care about the world that we live in because i know a lot of people are zoning out doing whatever i understand celebrate the holiday but don't lose track of what the holiday is and the reason i say that is for those of you that are on screen share look what the left has brought us leftist crap on the fourth of july with the hashtag america was never great as you can see there pj dub talking what he's talking about is uh leftist millennials and i don't I, I don't paint with such a broad brush because i i'm not one of those people that believe that the youth is stupid um i think that large swaths of the youth are stupid but i also believe that large swaths of the rest of our world is stupid so i don't paint with that large of a brush i happen to think there's enough stupidity to go around but uh leftists some millennials and black lives matter who are always wrong decided to celebrate the 4th of July by starting a hashtag that said America was never great and trying to get it to trend on Twitter. Uh, my problem with this is as follows, uh, beyond the obvious. Um, when I was um, when I was coming up, there were a lot of bands like the Dead Kennedys, who I still love, Rage Against the Machine, who I still love both musically and lyrically now i understand that both of those bands are rather left-minded and in my opinion they're wrong i don't think they're terrible people like i do hillary they're simply wrong but at least they're honest they're more bernie sanders jill stein left than uh hillary clinton or something vile like that so i get it but what they're not understanding is that the libertarian ideal is what is going to bring the most freedom that they're looking for, not the, not the uh, leftist propaganda that they're being fed. But what they're doing is they're attacking America and the things that they don't like in it. And the problem with that is that the things that you don't love, don't zone out on me here, the things that you don't like about the country have a right to exist whether you like it or not however you have the right to fight it and the best way to fight it is to attack it on the level of how wrong they are not to burn the american flag because while i understand exactly what you mean when you do that when you do that you are closing other people out from listening to the message that you're trying to convey so you need to ask yourself, is it more important to you to burn this flag so that you can feel hard? Or is it better to go ahead and not burn the flag and talk about what it is? Go on a street corner with a bullhorn if you have to. And win people over to your argument. That's going to be a lot better than burning a flag. All right, guys, all of this is brought to you, as you can see, by the uh, Seacrest Motel. It's going to be a short show. Don't zone out on me. I just want to give a shout out to the people that have always supported me. And one of those people right there, as you can see, is the Seacrest Motel. You're going to Sandusky. You're going to the races. You're going to go to the Cedar Point Amusement Park. And when you do, I don't want you paying a fortune. I want you to go right there. You can see it. Seacrest Motel. Let them know you heard about it on the correct views. And you're going to get a price that beats anything that you have ever seen when you stayed in Sandusky. Friends, uh, Washington Times new low Gallup poll says only 52% of Americans are extremely proud to be Americans. When I first went, read this, it bothered me greatly, but then I had to look at it like I did the last um, article. And that is, when, when a lot of people burn the flag, they're not burning it to disgrace the country. Are they disgracing the country? Yeah, I'd say they probably are. But that's not their motive in doing so they didn't necessarily some do but they didn't necessarily set out to uh urinate on the people that have kept us free that's what they're doing but they didn't try to um a lot of the people that are saying that they're less than extremely proud to be american what they're saying is 
America's done a lot of things lately that isn't American. Uh, wars, drones attack, uh, whatever you want to go to this week. Um, things that are un-American are what is decreasing their love of the country in terms of how they identify with it. But uh, this is worthy of note. I got sidetracked up here. Look at my mouse. Uh, people keep wanting Gr Gingrich as VP. I do not. Only fifth. That's why uh, Gingrich being VP is one of the reasons that only fifty-two percent are extremely proud to be an American. You can see the reason maybe right up there. You gotta love irony. Only fifty-two percent of U.S. adults say that they are extremely proud to be Americans. This is according to a Gallup poll. It's the lowest in sixteen years. It started to fall off immediately after uh, the high point, which was uh, of course nine eleven. That was. Uh, a 70% in 2003. And I was really upset with it. But if you read why, what they're saying is, it's, and again, uh, uh, no surprise here, conservatives are far more likely to be patriotic to that regard than liberals are. We know that because the left hates the country. Uh, they want us to be the exact hellholes that we never wanted to be. But the, the reason that this could be happening is uh, largely because of the direct direction that the country has gone in. Getting involved in a lot of things that are very un-American, and it's making them not as proud to be an American. Now, I'm not saying that, I ex that I'm expounding and saying that this needs to be the way you feel. But you can definitely see why. Uh, the trends in patriotism among young adults could be evidence that those in the millennial generation are less patriotic. No, it's because we've sent all their jobs away. We've outsourced them all away. And the reason they don't believe in the country anymore is because the country that was there for their parents is not the country that is there for them. Because their parents had some kind of an opportunity. Now, I say their parents, but I also mean mine. Because I'm 43, and I'm not a millennial. However, I'm closer to the millennials than I am the baby boomers, or the Gen Xers even. Really, when you look at when I was born, I was born in such a time where I saw the end of America being great. It wasn't all that great in my life ever. It really wasn't all this BS, all this liberal BS, all this outsourcing all of this destruction of the family and religion, the stopping of freedom of speech, the ability of the Fourth Amendment to be violated with DUI checkpoints and uh, tickets used as income, all of that, everything we rail about, rail about again on this show, I watched it happen. So America was not all that great in my lifetime, but it was certainly greater than it is now. And every, all of our ideals have faded away. So millennials, quit whining. It wasn't all that good for us Gen Xers either. We were cheated long before, so shut the hell up. Uh, RonPaulInstitute.org, this is really interesting. It's by Ron Paul, and he says on the 4th, demand freedom and don't celebrate the state. Very, very well worded, and I'm going to read a bit of this before we do uh, one more story and jump off here. It's brought to you, as you can see, by Sticker Junkie, the amazing, actually two more stories left. It's brought to you here by Sticker Junkie. Army vet, or excuse me, I went to the wrong story. Uh, as we gather with family and friends to celebrate the July 4th holiday, we should remember that we are not celebrating the state. And again, it doesn't mean the state that you're living. He is referring to the state as your rulers, your leaders, those who are your government. Do not celebrate them but rather commemorating an act of secession from an oppressive government. That's what we did. We left Great Britain because Great Britain treated us like America is treating us now. By us, I mean the people. Thomas Jefferson famously said that eternal vigilance is the price of liberty. That does not only mean that we should be prepared to defend against foreign invaders, he writes, perhaps more importantly, it means that we should retain the lessons from the original American revolt and guard against a government that views the people as the enemy. And we are familiar with the great observation from essayist Randall Bourne. He said that the health of the, the war is the health of the state. And 
Everyone, uh, listeners know that people like to use that as a justification for war. But he went on, and they never give you the rest of the quote. Look at it right here. If the state's chief function is war, then the state must suck out of the nation a large part of its energy for its purely sterile purposes of defense and aggression. It devotes to waste the actual destruction and the vitality of the nation. That's a little wordy. So what is it? What is it he's saying? He's saying that war, an endless war like we're seeing, is taking an enormous toll on the lives and prosperity and longevity of the people in the country. Aside from our fight to secede from the British rule, because a lot of people say over and over again that all wars have preserved our freedoms, Americans' wars have one by one diminished our freedom. They have not fought to bring us liberty, but have almost often fought to the behest of the deceitful and evil people with no benefit of their own. Now, I would also argue that we probably could have avoided World War II, but that was not a war that didn't need to happen. Um, it didn't need to happen. I don't think America needed to bomb Japan. I, I, I do not believe that because... Uh, they were already a beaten country. They were about to stop the war anyway. We did this as a show of force against Russia, really. So, I mean, I, I understand that. I also know that Pearl Harbor could have been stopped. How? Look it up, friends. I'm not making it up. Japan had announced that they were going to attack Pearl Harbor the Saturday before they did. So, I mean, it, it was not a surprise attack. Our government overlooked it as an excuse to get us involved in it, unfortunately. And again, I'm not letting Japan off the hook. They are the ones who ultimately attacked us, and they got what they deserved, but they didn't deserve nuked. That's like giving somebody the electric chair for jaywalking. That should not have happened. But uh, again, Ron Paul and I somewhat disagree, but again, I don't think any other war other than maybe World War II and the uh, the war for independence needed to happen. So I mostly agree with him. He does say wisely, as you can see right here, we should ask ourselves whether the last 15 years of war on terror have benefited us. He asks, are we safer or more free? And is there any end in sight? No, not all of the above, no. In our age of undeclared war, he writes, we are also in perpetual war. Trillions with a T of dollars have been spent and millions with an M of lives have been lost to no benefit on both sides. Instead, we are mired in ever deeper in the Middle East. Drone attacks proceed at the same pace. And we are pivoting towards Asia, not, but we're doing so with warships, not with friendships. And um, there's even people trying to provoke Russia. So, yeah, it's important to realize that the state is not our friend. And Ron Paul laid it off there very nicely. Uh, two stories to get to. This one's real quick, so it can take like 30 seconds. But it's, I thought it was kind of cool. Uh, it's from the American Mirror. Army vet frees bald eagle tangled in a rope 75 feet in the air. Basically, what uh, Jason Galvin here did, I'm not going to read it to you because I read a lot of the last one and I don't want you bored. But you can see there on the screen share, the bald eagle is tangled in a rope. He had been dangling for two days, starving, dying of thirst, fill in the blank, very unhappy bird. Here's what I thought was unusual there. Um, Galvin tried to get help with this when he saw the bird. He called the government bureaucrats. Now, this is a bald eagle, keep in mind, and the symbol of the freaking country, okay? This is not like a, a it's, it's not a small deal. This is disgusting. He called the, 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 uh, the great bureaucrats and told them that they were wrong, and it was uh, very much alive. The bird was not dead. They said that there was nothing they could do. So they were going to let the bird just dangle there to his eminent death with uh, no help whatsoever. And this gentleman had managed to take a gun and shoot the bird free from a long distance away. 
The Army sharp sharpshooter borrowed, it says, his neighbor's 22 rifle and sought to free the bird by shooting the tiny rope that was trapping it. He shot over 150 shots to, to nail his accuracy and actually, get it friends, wait for it, wait for it, he freed the bird on 4th of July weekend. May I ask, does it get any cooler than that? Had to do it. And friends, that brings us to the dummy of the day. And the dummy of the day, friends, is, uh, is, is, is as you would expect, a 4th of July post 4th of July dummy. Senate hearing witness involved in FBI training purge says, quote, there is no such thing as radical Islam. Now, never mind the fact that radical Islam is responsible for most of the mass shootings in terror in the world. Okay, never mind that radical Islam is responsible for killing non-radicalized members of their own religion in record numbers. Never mind Paris, never mind Orlando, which is why uh, Trump is picking up so many gay votes. Look up Milo Yiannopoulos if you doubt me. No, radical Islam is just a figment of our imagination. This is from Daily Caller from a Kerry Pickett. A witness at a state judiciary committee hearing on Tuesday refused to say that the Muslim community has a serious problem with radicalization. No, of course not. Farana Kiera, executive director and president of Muslim Advocates, an organization that requested the FBI purge training manual they believe to be offensive and inflammatory to Muslims. They dodged questions relating to whether Islam radical Islam existed. What a, this is what the dumb deal of the day is all about. When asked by several times by committee chairman Ted Cruz if she considered the term jihad used in the 9-11 commission to be offensive, she responded that the use of the term in general by the 9-11 commission report I don't think is problematic in and of itself. I think in general as officials talk about the threat that my concern is. Well, if it wasn't a concern, then why would it be purged from 126 times down to zero? Zero, 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 Cruz asked, referring to Kara's organization that requested the Obama administration to purge the term. Basically, Kurge is saying there is no radical Islam. Cruz said that the Long Island press quoted Glenn Cotton, who was the legal director of your organization, and he's talking about the the bigoted material that Kara said was in there. Like, what are you going to do about radicalization in the Muslim community? That's nonsense. There is no such thing. I'm curious, Cruz asked, do you agree with the legal director of your own organization that there is no such thing as radicalization in the Muslim community? In other words, are you saying that Muslims are not trying to behead people? This bonehead, Kara, replied, this is what we do believe, Mr. Chairman, what we believe, and that is based on attacks we've seen in our country in this year alone, whether it's the Orlando shooting, which was done by radical Islam, this idiot saying it wasn't, the attack on a woman's health clinic, it's often been done by uh, members of Islam, and the attack of the AME church in South Carolina, we know that extreme violence takes on many forms. In other words, all people are equal. If Christians do it, blame Christians. If atheists do it, blame atheists. But if Muslims do it, give them a free pass. There is no such thing as radical Islam. Friends, that is the correct views. I will be back on here again uh, probably Wednesday or Thursday. I've got the uh, Dunce Cap of the Month Award to do as well as the massive Fukushima update. But I've just posted two days in a row, and uh, I'm going to make sure I get these videos out because I don't have a lot of subscribers. But those I do are loyal, and I shall be ever loyal to you. If you'd like to be even more loyal, you can help me at Patreon, and uh, you can also donate at the correct views at Hotmail.com. Let me know where to send any donations, and all the money you give me goes towards a better show. 
Good night, friends. God bless. And make sure you share this show even after the 4th of July because I think there's a lot of things on here that are not time stamped or time dated. These things matter and they matter year round.